Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, this clip, I, I was scrolling through the comments section. I know I've got a lot of new subscribers. Um, I know a lot of people want to know what I own. It doesn't mean that I know everything, but I'll share what I own just because it doesn't really matter to me what, what, uh, what people know. I'm not going to be secretive with what I own. Uh, I've got a chart behind me. It's the producer price index. This thing has been going vertical. This means that we have an inflationary environment, at least it's been inflationary. I think a lot of the uh, commodities and a lot of the companies, precious metals, has not caught up to this. And that's good because it gives you an opportunity to buy something before it rockets higher. So my take on all of this and the way that I position to build wealth in the future uh, and how I'm positioned today is through real estate. I've got physical precious metals, and I've got a, a lot of commodity type equities, and I've got some other equities like mutual funds that are in some other stuff. And I know a lot of guys, a lot of people on the channel, guys, girls, a lot of people, uh, they're interested in what I own, and and maybe I can give you a little bit of the reasoning why I own it. Uh, so I'll, I'll 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 come in here and show you some of the charts of some of the things I own, give you my descriptions of why I own some of this stuff. Um, I'm going to start with the PPI. That's what this is. This guy is rocketing higher. Uh, what this is telling us is that we are in an environment where the producer price index goes up and it leads the movements of the consumer price index. And if you notice the big moves like the 40s, uh, we've got another big move in the, in the late, so 70. So this is 68 all the way till 80. That's a big move in the consumer price index. We've got another decent size move from 02 all the way till 2008. And we've got a launch here on the right-hand side. Uh, we've got a, a, a big launch uh, of the PPI bouncing out of its pattern here. And that's what this is up here. It's a big old launch. And this is going to manifest itself in higher commodity prices. So I'm, I'm favoring commodities. I've been in commodities because of the ratios. And just just to kind of let you know, like what I mean by the ratios, this is the this is the CRB index to S and P 500 ratio. It's breaking to the upside. It's breaking this downtrend. There you go. It's breaking the downtrend, ready to move on higher. And if you zoom in on the right-hand side, we had a nice clean break. Yeah, it's coming down a little bit, uh, but we'll eventually head much, much higher, I think. And eventually, I suspect the CRB index to outperform stocks. And we've got a lot of other ratios that are agreeing with that. Now, what are some companies that I own? I, I think that the diversified mining companies are quite solid. I own VALE. And we're going to look at this from a big picture view. This guy's still kind of in this downtrend. And we're, we're going to break through this. We hit our head on it. We're coming back. We're going to break through this and, and run. So I own VALE. I own Rio, which is Rio Tinto. These are my high dividend paying ones. I own BHP, big, big company. Uh, I own a little bit in Glencore. I own some in Norilsk Nickel. Big old pattern, breakout to the upside. Uh, I don't own anything in tech resources, although I think it's good. I don't own much in Freeport McMoran, even though I think it's good. Uh, but And then I own some Southern Copper. I own uh, NOVRF, which is a royalty company for copper and, and nickel. I've been buying it down here. I bought a lot when it first came out, and I'm buying more in here. And those are kind of my diversified metal mining type companies. They're big, they're well capitalized, they pay big dividends, and they're going to follow the price of a lot of these commodities higher. I call it a little bit my risk-adjusted stuff for co mainly copper, nickel, and all these types of metals. I, I think these are the ones that are going to do very well. Iron ore. Now, energy could hurt these companies if the metal prices don't go up enough. We'll see what happens because they do have uh, high energy input costs. 
I am a huge owner of <clears throat> of uranium. This is URNM for an ETF. If you guys like that, big bullish engulfing on the weekly candlestick to go higher. Uh, I own Bannerman, a, a good amount in Bannerman. I am, I'm accumulated a good amount in Goviax. I own Global Atomic. I own Forces Metals. I own Deep Yellow. Uh, I, I and I own all of the smaller companies. Paladin Energy right now looks fantastic where it's at. Put it in the logarithmic here. We've got this nice big coming up here to to make a break, uh, but it looks fantastic for a move higher. I own a little bit in Sky Harbor, which is an exploration company. Uh, I own a good stake in Next Gen Energy. Nice, good bullish engulfing on the weekly candlestick there. I like that a lot. Looking fantastic. I own a little bit in Can Alaska. That's another exploration company. Uh, I, I overweighted base load. Um, I got lucky and got a really good buying point on it. <clears throat> I think I bought it. Like, I bought it at 27 cents. BS ENF. Yep, I bought it. Bought it like this day, one of these days here. I got lucky, guys. <clears throat> I own a little bit in Fission 3.0, FISOF. Uh, I own and have overweighted Fission Uranium. <clears throat> I do not own any in CCJ or Kazatom Prom. <clears throat> I don't even know how to buy Kazatom Prom. I own Uroy. I own a good stake in, in Uroy. I overweighted Encore Energy. Encore Energy. Uh, and Bannerman are my two largest positions because of how much they've run up and how much I overweighted them in the beginning. I have very small positions in, in UU, UU, and URG, UEC, very small. Uh, I created a position in LTBR here recently at $6 and something cents. I added a, a more decent position for a ride higher here. Uh, the reason I did that is we've got this nice big downtrend that's breaking. We've got the volume stepping in. Uh, I bet you there's short sellers all piled into this thing. This could be a massive short squeeze to the upside. Uh, I'm taking advantage of it. I do own a, a good amount in IS ENF. I bought it back, uh, back, bought it in 2020. I think I bought it. I, I bought it out of this this guy somewhere in here, I think. And I've just been holding on. Uh, I own Appia Energy. Or Appia, rare earths, and uranium. Uh, I own hardly anything in DNN. Not, I mean, just a little bit. I own some, a, a small amount in blue sky uranium. I own a small amount, amount in Forum Energy Metals, which is another exploration company. <clears throat> and I own a, a small amount or decent amount in Laramide, kind of a medium amount. Another one that I'm getting, I'm starting to get a little more, uh, get a little bit more interested in Anfield Energy. I do own a little bit in it. I might add some more into it if it stays down. Uh, but it's a big old downtrend. The lows are starting to come up. And we're coming up into this downtrend, signaling that we could be coming into a, a bigger move. So that would be another one that I would be looking at if our people was... So the two that I that I don't really own that I might be looking at are Paladin Energy and Anfield Energy. Those are the two um, that I don't own that I should be owning. Uh, for oil, uh, SM Energy is my largest holding of anything that I own. I got lucky. I overweighted it a lot at $1.50, uh, right on the $1.50 mark, which was right here. Let me go. Let me back up here. I My, my lowest cost that I purchased at uh, was $1.40 something. I cost averaged in all in this little tip here. It blew to the upside, and I've been holding ever since. I do think this is going to move up uh, eventually quite strongly. CDEV, another one that I own uh, a good a good stake in. This is my second largest position in oil. I did buy some. Uh, I think it was right. It just took off. I got some in all in here, and then I kept buying it and buying it and buying it all in this region in here. I bought some more. Uh, in here, I bought some more in here, and I would buy more in here. Uh, Crew Energy, I own a good amount in this. My first purchase was at 33 cents. Uh, so I bought it 
Yep. So right here, I bought it in October of 2020. Basically the same time frame I bought all the other companies, a lot of them. I loaded in uh, and I, I bought a little bit more down here. I bought um, uh, some of these pullbacks I bought, added in. Uh, I do own CPEs. I, what sticks in my mind is like 16 bucks roughly. So $16 is right in here. I bought, yeah, somewhere in this range here. Before this break, I saw it and I was like, ooh, this looks good. Athabasca oil, uh, I bought a small amount uh, when people talked about it. I think it was like 16 cents or something. And then I bought more up here. <clears throat> Recaf, I do own a good amount, probably an amount that is a little bit too much. They're an oil exploration company. I think this chart looks fantastic the way this thing looks. Uh, it's all pointed downward. Usually that means it's going to resolve itself to the upside. Hopefully we get a big old move. I own Northern Oil and Gas, a good a good chunk in here. I bought more recently in here. <clears throat> I bought some on the break uh, earlier back here. Maybe it was like 14 bucks or something like that. Uh, I own CPG as well. It's another one I own. I think I bought it somewhere in here. Can't remember the exact pricing. But I own that with this reverse head and shoulders. It looks fantastic. Uh, GTE, I bought this guy down here. I bought it somewhere in this range and probably there, I think. And I bought it. Yeah, I bought it in there and I've been holding on. Uh, Tellurian, bought this one at 90 cents, if I can remember, and $1.30 were the two spots that I bought. So I think I bought it like in here and I bought it in here. And I've been holding on, just, just waiting. PED is one I'm looking at at its current position to maybe add a little bit in. Uh, I own Oasis. I bought it after they went bankrupt. <clears throat> uh, I bought it back here. And then I also bought their, uh, what is it called? Their warrants too back here when they were cheap as heck. And they've that's played out. That, that's been a very good play. I got lucky. CRK, I own this guy. Uh, someone said, hey, what about CRK? I bought it down here and I bought more over here. Uh, I, I do like CRK. They've got a nice, good pattern that's developed and it's very low. Uh, I own SD Energy. SD, I think I bought it, I can't remember, maybe in, in here or something. This one I didn't buy as early as the other ones. And I would be a buyer again. Uh, I own Tetra Technologies. I bought at a 50 cents in this little pattern there. And it's been rocketing higher, and I've just I've been holding on ever since. Uh, I own Transocean. I'm trying to remember when I bought Transocean. It's in my other account that I don't really look at much, but I own that, and this thing looks good. Inverted head and shoulders. I bought HLX, and I would buy it down here. Just hold on to it. I don't own these other ones. For I own all of these royalty companies like San D. Uh, Franco Nevada, I own this one. These chat, these patterns are huge, but I think I'm just a little bit early. I own EMX. I own Teuton Resources. I own Wheaton Precious Metals. I own Gold Royalty. Uh, I own a little bit of Metalla, not much. A little bit in Mavericks Metals, not as much. I own Royal Gold and Cisco Gold Royalties I've been loaned into over here. And then <clears throat> I own Discovery Silver. I own Metallic Minerals. I own Im, uh, Impact Silver. I own Aftermath Silver. I own First Majestic. I own EXK. And Corora Resources. I own a little bit in that one too. And then I own copious amounts of platinum, silver, and some gold. And these all look really good for patterns. So that's that's what I own. I, I probably own more that I'm not even thinking of. Oh, I own uh, uh, Mo Mosaic. I own ADM, a little bit of ADM, IPI, which is the fer uh, fertilizers. In fact, I've got some fertilizer. Uh, I, have, I think I have them down here. So here's IPI. And this this is a huge downtrend that broke. Uh, and I bought it down here somewhere. Like I got a really good deal and I've just been holding on. Um, I think I bought like 10 bucks maybe. I've been holding on to it and this pattern is massive. It's ready to break. Uh, well, it broke. It's ready to, to move a lot higher. 
API. ADM is another one I own. Uh, and, and it's got a, this is a huge pattern that will break into the upside. Uh, so I own ADM. I've just been holding on to it. Uh, I own Mosaic, another big pattern that we were talking about. It was one of our cheetahs. I said, buy it, buy it when it's breaking down here. And that's where I bought, I bought a bunch, I've just been riding higher. Uh, that looks fantastic. Uh, I also own some home builders, KBH. Uh, I own a little bit in KBH, uh, but this is a squeezing up. Hopefully we break to the upside. I'm not going to do anything with it. Uh, I own LGIH, a little bit in that, and HOV. And this is like my biggest missed opportunity, guys, is HOV. This thing's a massive pattern. I I don't know what, I, I, I just wasn't functioning at that time. I don't know why. But I, I had a chance to buy this at six bucks, and it's at 125. I messed up. I messed up here um, because I, I remember looking at it and I said, "Oh, HOV is really cheap," and I didn't pull the trigger. I did not pull the trigger, and I could have held through it. Uh, and what I would have done different is subscribe to Finding Values channel because I mean I have learned even even a even a bunch doing this stuff. I mean I have learned quite a bit, but. I saw HOV. I saw it at six dollars, and I should have bought the heck out of it. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. So, those are a lot of the companies that I own. Um, I do own some uh, uh, solar stuff too that I didn't go over here. Uh, FCEL is a renewable that's hydrogen and plug, and then I own some of the solar companies a little bit, not a ton. Okay, not a ton. Uh, I do think that. Their input costs are going to go up and they're going to struggle. So I've been on the fence. Okay. Been on the fence with those. But um, very heavily invested. It, if you're speaking about the percentages that I own, uh, I, I own a lot in uranium and oil and natural gas. It's probably, it's a very good chunk. I also own a good chunk in some mutual funds and royalty companies and precious metals and copper. And diversified miners. I, I own a very big chunk there too. So if you were to look, it might be like a 50-50 mix where I own 50% energy, 50% precious metals, like royalty companies, diversified mining companies, the other royalty company like Nova and all that, all kind of mixed in together. I do own Alphamen too. Um, and then I have the home builders in there. And I own a, a couple other things. Um my most conviction of, of all these is energy because I, I think we're screwing something up on the energy side. We're going to these renewables. We're growing our energy consumption use with time and we're not investing in the fossil fuels. So I see that as a huge asymmetric bet with, it, it's probably a, 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 a bigger, a, a better risk reward bet than what it's ever been in history because they haven't been putting money into growing that production. And even if they could grow the production, I don't know if they can anymore. We'll see. But uh, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be interesting. But that's what I own. Uh, that's kind of what I'm sharing on this, in this video here. You guys can see what I own. Um, I do what I would have done had I known what I knew now back when I was my, I'll do a whole different video on that and what I would have done differently. Uh, and, and I'll go over that. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.